Welcome to this short video introducing live scripts used in this course on MATLAB. Let's start by getting MATLAB running. The scripts that are being used in this short course and uh, how they work and how you're intended to work with them. So, once we've launched MATLAB, we are met with this friendly interface look. You have your fans up here with some different options. You have a current folder, command window, and workspace. Notice that you can choose the layout here to look differently if you prefer to have the workspace down here, for example. All right, let's start by navigating to a different folder. Um, we're going to browse for the folder by clicking this button here. And I want to go to my folder that I have prepared here. Good. So MATLAB works in a particular folder. And this can be important because if you're not in the same folder as the functions that you're trying to call, MATLAB won't be able to see them. So this is the first thing to do is to always make sure that you know where you are. You can click here and see the, the path in text and text, or you can just use the browse button as I did before. Okay. To get you started with a course, we've left a link on the course website um, on how to get the files. Um, this is uh, the link in its current form, but it actually can change over time. So go always go and check the course for that link. And first, we're going to call the function unzip on this link. We put the link in these quotes here. Oops, got a quote from too much in front of it. And what that's going to do is it's going to go online, download a zip file, and unzip it in this folder. So let's go into that folder by clicking twice on this. Here you see all the different exercises, and they're all in separate files, live scripts. We can double click on them to open them. And here we go. So it opens in a new window, as you can see, a live editor window. You can either choose, if you double click on the, the header up here, you can maximize it and you can change the, the layout however you please, um, depending on what your preferences are. I prefer to work with these maximized as I'm writing. And then these are the, no, this is what a live book looks like and this is where the exercises are. As you see, we can uh, scroll down, there are lots of things, and in the end of all of the notebooks, we're going to have additional material which is not tasks, but stuff for your interest. And along the way, we're going to have task one, two, three, four, and so forth. And there's going to be uh, some introductory text and then a task specified. And after that, you'll see a cell like this. Notice the difference in color. Here's where we write code. So we, when we write code inside of this, we can actually uh, execute it. So for example, let's look at what this first task might look like. A struct is a container which lumps different variables together. Each variable is accessed using a dot such that my struct dot my variable refers to my variable in the struct my struct. Function struct creates an empty struct. Okay, our task is now to do these three things. And as you can see, there's some code already provided down here that is either there it will say it will typically say fill in at some point. And this is where you have to write some code. And as you can see, this the code that is here is going to inspire us. So first we're going to create a field A as a scalar with a value of 2. And I can see that here result that some scalar equal to 1. So I wonder if we're not supposed to write results dot A equal to 2. Alright? So in order to execute this cell, as you can notice, uh, it's colored um, blue, this cell. If you put your mouse here to the side, it, it comes with a screen hint saying run current cell, command enter. It's probably control enter on Windows. You can also go up here um, and, and use some of these options here, run all or run current section. And you can uh, click on this button instead if you prefer. Um, as you can see, it ran the section and says task one at hand. Some fields are missing. Ah, but it's asking us to create field B and C as well. All right, so let's create field B and field C. These are the incorrect values, but let's see what happens. And then we run this. Some fields are not correct. 
is what it tells us now. So out here you will be seeing error messages that are going to tell you something about what went wrong. So as we can see, B is going to be a string called another example. And up here we can see how to create an example. So inspired by that, let's try and fill out these fields. And now I clicked command enter instead of clicking up here, but there's the same thing. And now it says solution is correct. When you get this message, you're ready to move on to the next exercise and start working on that. And you can see that it remains in place up here. You can also click out here to get the, um, the messages to appear below the code that generated them uh, as you please. I prefer to have them on the side. If you think there's too much text at any point, you can always click out, right click out here and choose clear all output. Now, at some point, you may be uh, working on one of the tasks here and you find yourself wondering how to see what's actually happening. Um, you can go to the command window and look at what is in memory. And actually out here in the workspace uh, window, you can see that we only have results in memory. So if I type results in here and press enter, then it prints the contents of results. You can see that it's a struct that has six fields, some scalar, some string, some vector, A, B, and C. So this way you can always type out the commands manually down here, results that A equal to three, for example, and then if you, uh, and then uh, print results, and you can see that we changed the field. So it's a convenient way to make sure you know what is in memory as you're progressing. And you can experiment a bit in the command window and then go back and enter it into the live book. All right. Um, one final note, if you uh, want to, you can see there's semicolons at the end of all the lines. If you remove semicolons, then it's going to be printing output here. So if, for example, if we remove the semicolon there, it prints what happens. And what happens is that it's created a field A in the result struct, so it prints the result struct and it has the A component now. If we remove it up here and run it, we can see that in the first time it's called, the A field isn't there yet. And now the second time, which is the output of this line, the results stru uh, struct has the field A as well. So that way, you can see what happens along the way if you want to. And finally, um, one, we can clear, of course, as I said, we can clear the output here, and then we can also clear the, all of the, out, uh, all of the uh, variables we have in memory. For example, if we create some variables, you can, whoops, you can see that they start appearing in the workspace. If the workspace gets cluttered, then the command clear will delete all variables in, in memory. This concludes this video and good luck with the exercises.